We're at the Palo Alto Airport. We're waiting for the CEO of a brand new airline that's going to be flying out of Palo Alto Airport. Yes, this little small airport down in Silicon Valley. And they're late. They're just a little bit late. 45 minutes late. <laughs> what happened? Um, yeah, sorry we're late. Hi, I, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> this is Wade Irely. Uh, I just picked him up at San Francisco Airport and he was delayed out of Los Angeles uh, International because of, you know, just heavy, heavy airline traffic. Now, if we were to use this plane, which is the plane that Surf Air wants to use, as the Pilatus PC-12, we would have been here in just about 90 minutes from the time that uh, Wade arrived at the airport and we would have brought him right here to Palo Alto and there's no traffic issues with regards to all the other airlines lining up. There's no issues with um, going through the traditional long security lines. This is the way that the traveling public should be traveling. So it's very much like Netflix for air travel. So with Netflix, you've got two DVDs and you walk, watch them as much as you want. Uh, for us, you're going to be able to hold, for $1,000 a month, you'll get four boarding passes. And those four boarding passes, you can use as often as you want. So you could book four days in a row going one way. You could book two round trips. But as soon as you fly one, you get it back and you're able to book it again. Just like as soon as you send a DVD back with Netflix, you can get another one. And do you think that that will be a little bit of a deterrent? Because a lot of the people that I would think that this would be worthwhile for would be traveling quite a few times a month. I would think that they'd be traveling multiple times during the week. Yeah, if you're trying to be a true daily commuter, this is not the right option for you. Similarly, if you only want to try, fly, try and fly Thanksgiving weekend, also not the best option. There's still just eight seats in the aircraft. Now, since you've put the word out there, what, about eight weeks ago, you've gotten emails from, what, 12,000, 13,000 people who are actually interested in buying in. Yeah, so we've got an awful lot of response from folks who've said, hey, we're really interested in what you're doing. I want to try it out. I'd love to get a subscription. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 500 of those people and we're going to run a beta test. We're going to we're going to fly two planes for three months. And by beta test, what it means is we're going to be we're going to we might change routes a little bit. We might change the structure. We might find out that nobody flies to Monterey on a Saturday, so we'll stop flying to Monterey on Saturdays. Now, what I would be concerned about here in Silicon Valley, I think the biggest market probably would be the corporate traveler, and I would think that the corporations around here, from Microsoft to Google and all of the above, would want to get in a sense a corporate pass and say, for maybe ten travelers a month, we're going to pay ten thousand dollars because it's a thousand dollar a month subscription but we're not going to tell you exactly who they are but you're not going to allow that to happen why is that so right now the model is built on one person one subscription now there is some flexibility in that you can bring a buddy with you the way you would at a country club or something else on occasion but the, the reality is the model works when it's one person to one subscription so it doesn't work right now now it may in the future but what we've got to do is put two planes in the sky, fly these 500 people, and really learn what that usage pattern looks like, what it is in reality. And then when we have that information, then we're in a much better position to look at Microsoft or Google or whoever and say, okay, this is how we could structure a corporate plan. This is what would work and wouldn't break the model. And one of the key things that I'm sure you learned in the process, Pivot. you've done a little bit of pivoting over the past eight weeks and probably more to come, right? That's right. We started at a price point of 500 bucks a month. We started using a Cessna 208, which is a little bit different, same size, but a little different aircraft. And as we went through, we said, okay, well, turns out this aircraft is better for what we want to do because it's hundred knots faster. So we'll get you there 20, 25 minutes faster in this than we would in a 208. And that meant we could get more people back and forth between Palo Alto and Santa Monica in a day, and that meant a lot to us. So we switched aircraft. And then as we're looking at it, well, that's also a slightly more expensive aircraft. So does it still work at 500 bucks a month? You know it doesn't, but it's important enough, important enough to us to add these new seats to the sort of inventory or capacity of seats. We're going to have to change the price point. There's plus and a minus to that. At 1000 bucks a month, we have a smaller pool of folks who'll be interested in it but we can focus our marketing and target them more specifically because it, it is a smaller group. So I would imagine that you probably don't need venture capital right away. I mean, if you have um, paying customers, 500 paying customers right away, is that going to cover all of your costs and a little more? Well, interestingly, no. Uh, we, we will go out and seek some funding. We initially thought we wouldn't have to because of exactly that. Uh, but we thought we would be able to get a factoring loan against, you know, uh, against the, the pre-sold subscriptions, et cetera. But it turns out, uh, Building an airline is kind of a capital intensive deal. So we'll go out and raise some money and we'll share the success with a bigger group of folks.